Hello and welcome to today's webinar, the second in our new series, Advice and Perspective from Friends of UConn, where UConn Center for Career Development will bring guests to you to talk about the career journey in these tumultuous times. We're planning a mix of alums and experts on starting, restarting, and surviving career-wise in this economy. My name is Lisa McGuire and I'm with the Center for Career Development at UConn. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items just so you know how to participate in today's event. You should see the attendees interface on your computer desktop in the upper right corner. You're listening in using your computer speaker system by default. If you'd prefer to join over the phone, just select telephone in the audio pane and the dial-in information will be displayed. Today's webinar is designed to be interactive with a Q&A format. I will ask our panel some prepared questions, but the value of this session is to have your questions answered. You'll have the opportunity to submit text questions to us by typing your questions into the questions pane of the control panel. We encourage you to send in your questions at any time during the presentation and we'll address them throughout. Note that today's presentation is being recorded and will be provided to you within 48 hours. It will also be displayed on our website. With that out of the way, let's get to the reason we're all here. Please let me introduce our guests. Alumni Ty Jenkins, Senior Manager of yeah. Talent Acquisition for Verizon Media. Alumni Leah Lorenzo, DiLorenzo, Associate Director of Internship Development for Northwestern Mutual. Bruce yeah. Soltis, Second Vice President and Head of Talent Sourcing for Travelers. And no video, but just audio, Greg Pear, who is the Lead Recruiter for Target. These volunteers represent a few of UConn Center for Career Development's close corporate partners whose dedication and commitment to our student talent and growth stand out. We greatly appreciate all they do for our students and alums and value the perspective they bring to us today and every day. Without further ado, let's get to the reason we're all here. We're going to start with questions about our career coaches have been getting from our students and alums on an almost daily basis. Let's start with what you're doing. Can you tell me a little bit about what your organization is doing with your internships and full-time hires? How and how often have you communicated this to them and what are they expecting? And let's start with Leah. Sure. Um, so right now, um, I run the internship program at Northwestern Mutual in West Hartford. So um, I know it's a very um, weird time for us all. It's something that we've never dealt with, something I never thought I'd ever live to see, uh, for sure. But um, we're handling it as best we can. Um, I think we are learning and adapting to new ways of doing things, and I think it's going well. Um, I'm trying to, you know, keep a positive message to the incoming interns. Um, we are still having an internship this summer. It may look a little differently than our traditional internship, but um, we're staying positive. Um, and we're going to provide the best possible internship experience that we can given the circumstances when um, the time comes. So. And that starts out virtually or you're going to try to start out in person? So yes, yeah, so um, our training is usually pretty big. Um, so our, our training is typically um, between 70 and 80 interns and regardless of what the current state of the you know country looks like during the time of when our training happens uh, first week of June, probably still not the best idea to put that many people in one room at the same time. So we are definitely moving our training to a virtual format. Um, the other events to follow throughout the semester, we don't really know how those are going to be held yet. Um, we're going to make the decisions at the time, you know, in the best interest of the health and safety of the interns coming in. So um, stay tuned on that. But for now, um, we are prepared to do what 100% virtual internship if we have to. Great, thank you. Ty, what is Verizon Media doing? Excellent question. Thanks again for having me here today. In terms of internships for this summer, uh, we are having all of our interns start virtually, which is really great. I think one advantage we have being a uh, tech organization is that some of our workforce is accustomed to working virtually. So it's just a matter of our university recruiting team partnering with them to kind of understanding uh, best practices so we can bring internships to a, a virtual type of experience and make it as best as possible given everything that's going on. But so far, um, from what I'm hearing, we have our, our, our boots on the ground. Um, we're ready to gear up and we're super excited to have our interns start virtually. Great. Thank you. Bruce, what is Travelers doing? Yeah, so um, 
apologies for not being a UConn alum. That was missing from my intro. Um, so I was a Rutgers alum, but don't hold that against me. So, um, so with Travelers, we have 400 interns uh, across the country, about 25 locations. The vast majority of those, or you know, roughly half, uh, will be in Hartford this summer. Um, and you'll be happy to know that of the 400 interns from across the country, 60 are from UConn. So we've got a tremendous representation of, of Huskies in our intern population. Um, we had sent out a series of communications starting in the middle of March, right around when this was, you know, we were moving to a complete work from home environment. We tried to be as transparent as possible with our interns to say, we don't know what this is going to look like at this point in mid-March, but we will stay close to it. Here's what we're doing for our own employees right now, and you'll hear more from us. We followed that up with a communication at the end of May, uh, end of March to tell them, uh, just again, keep them apprised and let them know that a decision would be coming by the middle to end of April. Um, and last week, we did communicate that, uh, that we would be going with a virtual start for all. Um, th there's a you know, a glimmer of hope, I think, from some folks that we'd be able to get some folks into the office. But I think as we see how this plays out, that that is really minimized. So we're fully expecting our internship to be 100% virtual. But uh, we've communicated and reached out to all of our interns, either via email or phone, to let them know we're going to ship equipment to you and some of those logistics. We'll hold some pre-boarding calls during the month of May to let them know what that day one will look like and kind of answer questions. Um, with that audience. But that's where we're at right now, and uh, we're still looking forward to a great summer. Thanks, Bruce. And, and one point um, that I heard you make before, and you alluded to it, is um, in your communications, you were, I think, very specific on, you will hear again from us on this set date, and then you will hear again from us on that set date, which I think really helped um, really allay fears and concerns by students and uh, your your new hires. Yep. So Greg, I know we can't see you, um, but I know you're wearing red. Um, can, yeah. you, <laughs> <laughs> can you tell us what uh, Target is doing? Yeah, so Lisa, we made the decision last week uh, that we were gonna shorten our store and distribution center internships from 10 weeks to six weeks. Every campus recruiter across the country had to call every intern personally. I had to call 52 of them and explain the program. And, and we gave them an opt out. So if they were felt uncomfortable with this COVID-19 and coming on board in July, they would have the ability to interview with us again in the fall for a full-time offer because that's basically what our internship is. Our internship is truly a 10 week in, or now it's gonna be a six week interview. But we called uh, we called all our interns. I know for me, I was 100%, so every intern that I called is still willing to do the internship. And actually, I, I was kind of amazed. I thought, you know, you'd have some kids be upset. Every kid was truly understanding of the, the situation. And the reason we designed, we shortened it, is uh, primarily for the store's sake. So the stores, you know, are dealing with this COVID-19, and it's all new to everybody, unprecedented. And we thought we'd give them a few more weeks to get you know, used to dealing with this. So that we brought the interns in, which is a big thing to us. We could give them the, um, you know, the attention they needed. So uh, everybody's been contacted. They'll be contacted again. They've all been told what store they're going to, but they'll be contacted again when uh, by their mentors once we train them. So the campus recruiters will be doing all the training to the mentors. Uh, sometime in the middle of May, uh, and then they'll be contacting the interns, and then they'll get a schedule two weeks prior so they know it, what they're doing the whole time. In terms of full-time, um, we are going full blast with our full-time. So as an essential business, uh, all our full-time offers that we made are starting either June 1st, and we have some kids even moving it up because they're not doing anything. There's no graduation ceremonies. So we have kids starting next Monday. We have, but primarily all our... Um, full-time offers are starting June 1st. That's great, Greg. In, in those, some of those 50 plus conversations that you had, um, were students feeling nervous? What was what your sense? I know you mentioned no. that they were pleased and excited that, that it's gonna go forward, but what kind of other issues were you talking with them about? No, we did give them, there was, you know, a strict uh, verbiage that each of the campus recruiters had to give them an, op, we called it an opt-out. So if they felt like they were uncomfortable coming into an environment like this, 
there would be, we understood, uh, no problems at all. They could opt out and then interview with us in the fall. But there were no concerns. I mean, the majority of kids were like, oh, I totally understand, or it makes sense. Uh, I'm glad I just have an internship. So um, really understand, I was really pleased with all the conversations that I had with each of the interns. That's great. So the next question, we have one from the audience, um, and it's one that is a little bit tough for, for this group because you're all going forward with your internships. That said, I know that you talk to peers um, elsewhere, um, and maybe you can offer some insight to some of our viewers because this uh, student would like to know about um, what your recommendation might be to a student whose internship was canceled. So this student says that um, their internship was canceled and they graduate in December, so it was their last opportunity to have an internship. What do you recommend? Yeah, I, I can jump in um, if, if you'd like, Lisa, it's Bruce with Travelers. Um, first off, uh, you know, I'm certainly sorry to hear that, right? I know there's a number of hardships that this situation's created, but I would stay positive, right? You're, you're, you're on a, a great trajectory to graduate and, and don't take your mind off of your academics and your grades and, and things like that. So, you know, you want to trudge forward in that sense, right? And keep your eye on the finish line. That being said, um, one, the, the current internship, there's been a lot of talk about, um, well, do I take it off my resume? Do I, you know, like it never happened. Well, you still earn that internship. And this is a purely personal view. And I posted something on LinkedIn a few days ago about it, but that I would not take it off my resume, right? I would show that I had received this offer, you know, through my accomplishments, through my interviews, and I think it's completely valid to still list it and just make a notation that it was canceled due to COVID-19. So representing that on your resume and in your cover letter is not falsifying anything, and it showcases, you know, a little bit about, you know, why you find yourself in the situation. So that's first and foremost. Second, there are companies that are still hiring. You know, I don't know what this individual's major is, but there are companies that are still hiring. There are several, um, you know, sites out there. I've seen there's a GitHub page, there's a Twitter account, I think it's at Hiring20. It's all crowdsourced information, but it may very well give you some leads in terms of what companies are still hiring. Um, I have not been on the handshake, you know, on, on the Yukon, you know, side of things on, uh, on the center, career center site. I would imagine that if there are still openings, you, you can search there. And, you know, at, at lastly, you know, publicize it in a sense. I have seen a ton of interns that are in the same situation. Put notes out on LinkedIn. Hey, I'm in this situation. Who in my network can help? Um, and I've seen a lot of dialogue back and forth. Hey, call me. Shoot me your resume here. So you know that self advocacy still has to be front and foremost as well. So that's some great advice, Bruce. Thanks. And I have seen some mixed reactions. So how about some of our other panelists? What are your thoughts on whether or not to put that um, in canceled internship on your resume? I have to agree. I definitely think um, you know, this is this is something that people are going. It's part of history that we're living right now, and I think it's definitely important to put that on your resume because you did earn it. Um, in terms of you know what to do now that you've lost an internship again, I'm sorry. That's I can't imagine what it's like to be a graduating senior right now um, and during this you know job market um, with all of this stuff going on. So. My recommendation uh, would also be the same. There are companies that are still hiring, Northwestern Mutual being one of them. Um, but I think because you don't have as many resources as you did being on campus anymore, you have to be a little bit more active and, and not as passive in your job search. Um, whether that means putting yourself out on LinkedIn, um, whether it means actively you know, being on job boards every day and, and looking for opportunities. And, and I think another thing too is to, to you know, apply for something even if you don't know if you're completely right for it. I think um, employers are a little bit more, you know, receptive to the job market right now. There's a lot of people that, um, you know, a lot more people are, are looking. And so you may be a good fit for an opportunity that you may not have considered before. Um, we know that there are a lot of opportunities that are not available depending on what type of, you know, major you're, you're part of. Um, but I would say just take advantage of opportunities that you may not have taken advantage of before. 
And just to add to what uh, Bruce and Leah um, alluded to as well, I think now more than ever, it's super um, important and critical to network. Um, this is a great opportunity to, to, to reach out um, via LinkedIn. I mean, a lot of people are practicing social distancing. So LinkedIn is going to be a great tool for you. So what I would do in that case is make a target list of all the companies you ideally would like to work for and go through LinkedIn and start to build out a list, reaching out to recruiters, um, as well as HR, even hiring managers to kind of explain your situation. And I think everything that's going on, given that we're all in this together, people are gonna be willing to understanding and go that extra mile to kind of help you out or provide some guidance to you. Greg, did you have anything to add? It's pretty well covered, but we'd love to yeah, hear. How you would no, that's that. pretty well covered. The only thing I, I would do, and uh, I was on another panel with, and we, this was the main topic of, you know, what do I do now? My thing got canceled. And, and I would just, you know, try to better yourself. Maybe take a class you never thought of, take an online class you never thought of, um, research stuff you never thought of, reach out to people on LinkedIn that you, you know, didn't know. But I would definitely stay connected to the recruiter, even though the company canceled their internship, that doesn't mean they're not gonna hire full-time in the future. So stay connected to that person. Um, and hopefully the job does turn out from it. It might not be the internship, but you might have a full-time job in the future. That's a, all of you had some great advice, but we did have one question, a student who kind of pushed back a little bit on that and said, um, so if I put that on my resume and I say that my internship was canceled, how would the new employer that I'm applying to feel about that? Because now they're kind of my second choice. Do you have anything to offer to, to make that student feel better about that? Uh, Lisa, I'll just pipe in. I, I, I don't know about any other company, but I know at Target, we love talent. So if you're talented and someone else got you first, but now that there's an opportunity for me to have you come in and join us, then I'm still all open arms for anybody like that. Absolutely, I, I would second that as well. So. Um, we, we welcome with with open our, our application window is closed and we're, we're we're set for now but you know for for those that are graduating you know we have a ton of open jobs for full-timers and and we would never you know hold that against them in that sense i i also kind of want to add to that and say that an internship is really a way to test drive a career and see if it's something that you like in the first place so if it was an internship um that has gotten canceled and now you're looking to do another internship that's just a different opportunity that you're pursuing and it's one step closer to finding out what the right path is for you. So. That's great. I'm glad you, you made them. And I'm sure that helps people and makes them feel better. Um, the the follow-up to that question is, should they disclose who it was with? So I guess by definition, if they put it on the resume, they have disclosed who it's with. Um, yeah. So, so question asked and answered. Um, let's keep on that resume question a little bit. Um, in terms of pass fail, because so many students have, um, in some schools apparently have, at least I've read, have mandated all pass fail and some have left it optional. Does that that change um, the way you view a student if they've if they put pass fail or, or opted for pass fail on their transcript? I don't think you know, it's Bruce again with travelers. Um, no, I mean, the stuff like that is is outside of the student's control, right? And a lot is being dictated by, you know, academic departments and decisions that, um, you know, deans and provosts are making as it relates to just their academic approach. So in, in no way would we look at anything with, with pass fail or, or any commentary in and around that as a negative uh, on the individual super unless of course maybe it's a fail right like I mean, you know yeah but but obviously right you're wanting to make sure it's a tough conversation to have is i failed this i failed it right so so hopefully it's conversation about it you're on the past side of things but um no no sort of negative indicator or or anything to hold back you know i i know for us right there there are preferred gps we're, we're not a a shop where we say okay your gpa is not this so we won't even look at you right a lot of companies have moved to that preferred gpa um, piece anyway um but on a pass fail we we've, we've certainly uh, taken into account a lot of schools are moving to that model again because of just you know unprecedented times that we never expected to be in so i wouldn't i wouldn't see it as a hindrance and i, I wouldn't uh you know lose lose too much thought over it 
Yeah, I agree, Bruce. Um, it's definitely not a hindrance by any means. And I, I think it's important to remember, um, again, different for different companies and different recruiters, but um, GPA is not the only factor that we look at when we look at revenues. We you know, take into account experience, and which is which is why I would like to see that you were proactive in the internship, internship search. Um, and if you had an internship and, you know, we can't hold that against you because you, you didn't, you weren't able to participate in the internship because of everything that's going on. So understand that um, employers and recruiters, we are people too. We understand that things happen and that we are all in this um, very unprecedented situation together. Um, and we're not going to hold anything against you that's, that's happened in this time period. Great. Thank you. Um, now, one of the things that we all do, in, so you hire interns and the interns take internships because in, in with the idea that it will turn into a full-time job, right? It's, it's a conversion in your world. Um, and traditionally, you will make the offer toward the end of the internship and you give the students um, a certain set amount of time to make that decision. Um, have you thought about, or is it soon to ask, um, altering that? Is there any thought about changing that plan? Lisa, I'll just jump in. This is Greg from Target again. I mean, for us, there, because we are still doing it uh, live, uh, there is gonna be no plans. We typically give the candidate two weeks after the internship, if we make them an offer to make a decision, because you know, after uh, the internship, they should either like this is what I want to do, or no, nah, I'm not really interested. So, because we need to have plans going forward, like how many full timers we need in the future. So, we're still going to stick with like a two week program, two week offer time. Yeah, same for us at Travelers. Um... We definitely, you know, full 10 week program is, is what we're doing. And as part of that, we do plan on holding conversion, you know, the conversion process, right, to, to generate full time offers. Um, it'll be interesting to see, right, honestly, a lot of students kind of know at the end of their internship whether or not this is the one I want to accept. Some still like to shop it around a little bit, but it's going to be interesting to see what the, you know, the fall shopping season will be, right? Because we're, there's so much unpredictability around, well, will we even be back on campus for academics, let alone be back on campus for employer engagement, right? So I would imagine that a lot of employer engagement in the fall will end up being virtual. Um, and will that change students' minds as it relates to how quickly they accept that conversion offer? So certainly be interesting, but we're still planning on using, utilizing our 10-week internship as that uh, part of that, you know, full-time conversion. Yeah, I mean, I understand, and, and too often others don't understand as much what's on your end of the, of the of the side of your side of it which is you know you've got a student you make the offer they need to decide it's a whole domino effect right so if they um if you give them longer time and they turn the offer down you've got to start the process all over so it, it, it's a whole what people don't often understand is a domino effect so that's i suspect that's one of the main reasons you're sticking with that timeline and it makes perfect sense so um and who knows what will happen after that. Now, you've been fortunate, um, all four of you, to um, have had good conversations with your, your full-time hires and your interns, and sounds like you have 100% participation. What about those students who um, have, have suddenly found themselves in different situation, whether it's a home situation where they don't want to work out of their home, they're not comfortable with that, or it's a Wi-Fi connection, or they're just uneasy, or they had to relocate and they can't afford it because their family is struggling, a variety of reasons that they might have to renege. Um, in your opinion, would that, would that be held against them, and how could they find something that will fit? Does anyone have any solutions for that? I think personally, um, at Verizon Media, that's something that we wouldn't hold against anyone completing an internship. And it's just a matter of how it's done. If it's an environment that you're not fully supported and feel like you're gaining anything from the internship, and if you speak to it, I mean, again, it goes along the lines of not burning any bridges. Um, I think that's something that you can go to and speak to a hiring manager and would be an understanding of. 
Um, a lot of what we're dealing with, I mean, it's unpredictable. It's it's unforeseen. Um, so we're trying to do the best as we can to provide a, a full-time virtual experience to internships. But if you're not getting the most out of it, it does you no justice. Absolutely. I also want to add to that and say that as long as there's a direct line of communication with the person that you're working with, um, you know, from the company that you're planning on interning at this summer, um, or a company, you know, that you're going full time with, um, you can't hold anything against you. We definitely, we wouldn't. Um, but I mean, I, I personally, I get more work done when I'm in the office, which is why I'm in the office today. But we do have the opportunity to work from home um, out of, you know, the safety and concern of our employees um i just work better here and i know that and i, I think if you know if it becomes a difficult situation where you don't know how you're going to navigate your internship or your you know full-time uh opportunity then um i think having an open communication about just not being the right time to take on this opportunity is a lot more valuable um than just ghosting us or you know not not saying anything at all so And I would say, you know, there was a reason we 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 had um, outreach to the interns uh, and, and full timers as it relates to giving them the opportunity to come back. Hardships, concerns. Don't don't just come back and say, you know, I can't do this because we might be able to help with with some sort of you know um, uh, solution to what your perceived issue was. So definitely have a conversation. We've had a few conversations with folks on how we could help remedy their situations. So at this point, I only know of one of the 400 that said, you know what, this is just not going to work right now. And we chatted through, you know, without prying, but just, hey, help us understand, is there, you know, but it just was was something out of out of their control, out of our control, right? That, but again, um, if you feel there's going to be an impediment for some reason, you know, I, I think feel free to voice that to your potential employer. See if there's a solution, right? Don't don't just make a decision without uh, involving them, because again, they may they may meet you halfway somehow and and come to a mutual solution. So definitely have the conversation. <laughs> As was said earlier, we're all humans, right? We we all have some kind of compassion and empathy. So I think um, we don't always remember that. So it's good to hear it as often as we can, I think, especially right now. Uh, I'll go to the questions. I see that someone asked, in addition to LinkedIn, online, uh, what online tools or trends do you foresee will be the most utilized uh, especially for interviews both during and after COVID-19 and I want to just plug um, LinkedIn for alumni so um, use your network with alumni Huskies helping Huskies there's a Husky mentor network online as well um, so make sure you use that but beyond that what else do our panelists recommend So beyond um, LinkedIn, I would recommend uh, Glassdoor. It's a great tool to utilize to get an inside peek at different organizations, kind of hear um, from people's interviews there, from people who currently work there, what they love, what they don't love. Um, I think it's, a, it's an excellent source to kind of help you narrow down your focus as to which organizations um, you definitely would consider. In terms of what, um, I guess, the workforce or even just um, society is gonna look like post-pandemic, I think um, virtualization is being accelerated. I mean, we're already on that path, but this um, this pandemic has made it more crucially important for us to connect in different ways. And I think a part of that is going to be um, how do we create different virtual experiences, whether it's an internship done virtually, whether it's a new job and you have to work remote, how do we stay connected? So technology is gonna be a huge driver of those different experiences. So this is a great opportunity for everyone to kind of adjust to kind of rethink or reimagine working virtually. Any other suggestions? Okay. Um, so another question is, can you think of any new positions? And again, this is 
our panelists have uh, their own jobs um, available, but um, any new positions that may be more in demand in light of COVID-19, for example, more companies need more power in the marketing research department or on how to adapt the approach to the new environment and culture. So do you see, I know the crystal ball thing, do you see your company um, creating sort of some new kinds of positions as a result? I wouldn't say new, um, just more of, you know, the the jobs that are currently in demand. Um, I'm just going to kind of talk about my experience of what I've seen. So obviously I work at Northwestern Mutual. I work around a bunch of financial advisors. Um, who are the people that, you know, our clients come to when they don't know what's going to happen with their future? They go to their financial advisor. So I think this is a very good example of, you um, exactly why this company exists. Um, our clients need us more now than ever. So financial advisors, people that are going to help, you know, their clients navigate through this very uncertain time and, and you know, instill that they're still going to be financially secure through all of this. Um, you know, people need that right now. Um, so maybe not new positions necessarily, but just more of roles that, you know, people that are in demand at the moment. And to also um, add to that, um, not necessarily new as Leah mentioned, but I think data is going to be huge for us, um, just in terms of how people are adjusting to this new sense of norm. Um, we've seen an influx in growth in terms of video on demand or video games or video conferencing. So understanding data is going to be very key and essential to driving a lot of jobs from monetizing data, from security of data. Companies are going to be leveraging data in new ways. Yeah, and, and I would say, you know, this is just more of literally thinking off the top of my head, but th there has been an increase in demand for network bandwidth, right? I'm sure, you know, the folks at Verizon can attest to this, but as so many people move to this remote environment, right, there there is going to be, you know, solutions for, um, you know, at home ergonomics, right, and things like that. And, um, you know, think about all the work that's going to be done in like office redesign to ensure physical distancing, right? I mean, just these these new trends. Obviously, healthcare is, is going to continue to see, you know, high demand, right, in, in terms of that. Um, uh, from a research standpoint, I'm sure, and, and, and things like that. But, you know, just the, the new way of life we've seen, I, I think as of last week, was it Instacart who had a goal of hiring like, I think it was two or 300,000 people, like doubling their workforce during the month of March, right? So if you think about that, that large scale on demand, right? Um, the delivery services have never been busier as it relates to that. So um, those are just things that I think of everyday life and the domino effect, you know, there, so. That's a great crystal ball. It's very impressive. Um, so one student asked uh, if they get a part-time job because they need a job um, now just to be working, what skills do you think um, would be worth noting on their resume for when they do apply for that full-time job, that career where any of you, what would you be looking for? Yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a big proponent that every experience is a valuable experience right so if it's a part-time job that's not related to your major or your intended career track there are still competencies that you are going to pick up and exhibit in that in that experience um, whether it's resiliency flexibility time management customer service uh, you know all of the things that employers are really looking for as as baseline skills communication um, you know if, if you're dealing with numbers and, and, and analysis and, and things like that um, customer orientation empathy customer experience so you know just because it may not be in your your dream field or your intended field don't don't let up a, a part-time uh, job that that is necessary um, you know think it's going to derail or, or be a uh, a negative on, on your experience. 
No, absolutely. absolutely. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Go ahead, Todd. Um, no, thank you. Uh, Bruce, um, thank you for, for definitely sharing that. And I agree with you as well. Um, oftentimes, um, a part-time job can help lead you to a full-time job. You don't know who you're going to meet. And I think more important than anything, as um, Bruce alluded to, you're learning so many different valuable skills. But at the heart of everything, you're learning how to deal with people. No matter what industry you're in, no matter where you're from, um, people make this world go round. So the better you're able to understand, um, to interact, and to work with people, the better off you're going to be. Absolutely. I think uh, another thing too is um, employers want to know that you spend your time valuably. Um, and a gap in a resume says, you know, it it causes more questions than if I saw that you had, you know, a food service job or a retail job. And um, I wouldn't discount just putting that on a resume. I know. So when I was when I was doing my master's at UConn, I was working at Starbucks and. You know what I learned? I learned how to deal with the most difficult type of people, the people that haven't had their morning coffee yet. You know, So those <laughs> types of things, if you can speak to those experiences, I want to see those on a resume. That's great. Thank you. Greg, what, hey, Lisa, what if, I could, if I could just add, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, you know, the question was about part-time job too, but now more than ever, I, I've seen stories about people just volunteering to help in their community. I've seen people who, um, you know, have helped with uh, PPE equipment, either delivery or or helping coordinate moving things from one place to another. Um, I've seen people helping elderly neighbors. I've seen people, you know, just again volunteering their time, right? Um, that that is that is one, you know, wonderful one. But two is it would be would be definitely you know, um, looked very positively upon and when you're telling your story and things like that. So it is a tough market for some, um, but but there's a lot out there that need help. And if you find yourself being, you know, volunteering to do that help, definitely don't minimize that, um, and, and definitely put that on as well. So I would put that in the part-time cat job category as well. That's great, and our community could use that too. So um, yeah, those transferable skills, and uh, students can also always, and alums can always come to us. We can help you frame that on your resume as uh, as those and take advantage of those valuable skills that you're picking up. Um, Greg, I have a question that came in, sort of not directed toward you, except it's a question you should answer first, I think. Um, if you have to go to work in person, how is your organization going to support yep. COVID protective measures? And you don't have to get into anything that's confidential, but just generally. No, so generally, uh, and that's why, you know, we read uh, the, the, the interns, the option to, to opt out, basically. So we're doing a few things uh, to try to protect our workers. I mean, they're considered essential workers, but they're in kind of harm's way. They're dealing with this COVID-19. But a couple of things we've done. Done, we metering the store, meaning um, we monitor the number of people going into a store. And so if it gets to a point that we truly have to stop, we stop it. There's been long lines. I've gone to stores, Westboro Mass, and I luckily happened to get in it like right at eight. But by, by the time like 8.30, I'm leaving, there was a long line into a Westboro store, which is a small volume store. So we're only letting a certain amount of people in so it's not congested. Number two, we're putting uh, for our workers, we're giving them mask and gloves. Any uh, team members have to wear it. It's not, it's not optional, they have to wear that. And then yeah, it, we've put uh, signs up at the front of the registers so that they every guest is uh, knowing that they should be saying six, six feet back. And then we have periodic messages over the intercom system and then for our cashiers, we put up a plexiglass uh, so that there's less guest interaction with the guests. So those are just some of the things we're trying to do uh, for our team members. That's great. And then for the others who are starting off virtual, at least starting off virtual, um, and Leah, I know that you're hoping to be in person um, as well, but what are you doing to support um, the for any kind of either virtual protective measures, um, what are you doing to support those roles? I've been working closely, uh, not me in particular, but just 
um, the campus recruiting from all across the country has been working closely with our home office, which is based in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, to um, you know prepare for the worst. And in the case of this internship this summer, it is 100% virtual. Um, we are putting together you know a strategy around that in a way, you know, a curriculum of how we can still provide um, a great learning experience, how to be you know a financial advisor. Um, I have seen our full-time representatives, um, some, of, some of them are using this time to their advantage and, and using you know, the message um, of everything that's going on in the world in a more positive light um, and being able to help people through a difficult time and make sure that at the end of this, when we are all coming out of it, they're not in a you know, tough situation. Um, and I think that's very powerful. Um, some of the advisors here are doing better now than they do, you know, on a, on a regular basis, because people are very concerned about what is going on in the world. What is their, you know, financial future going to look like for their family? Um, so I think it's, the, Northwestern Mutual is taking all of the right steps. Um, they're allowing us to work from home, um, allowing us to, to use these new ways of conducting business, either virtually or, you know, through phone conferences. Um, and we're not falling behind by anyone. Are you guys supporting um, your interns, Ty and Bruce, um, with technology or any other kind of support? So yes, for our interns, we're sending them kind of a um, welcome to Verizon Media package um, for the internship. So we're making sure they have everything that they need from a uh, equipment standpoint such as laptop, a lot of our interns are um, going to be partnering uh, with our technologists for engineering work. So they're going to get a chance to still be able to communicate, um, still be able to get laptops to, to work on coding and work on different projects and things of that nature. And they can also send in a request. Um, we have our tech teams that's out supporting them if they need um, extra resources such as a monitor or a mouse or, or things of that nature. And on our end, you know, a lot of a lot of what we had to do over the past week or so was confirming the address that we had on record. Is this where you're going to be this summer, right? Because we've got to ship it out to you. So uh, a lot of logistical outreach as it relates to that. But um, it's it, it, it was a, it was a lot of information going back and forth. I'll say, but we've got everything that we need. That's great. Good to know. Um, a student asked, given the environment, would I be better off to apply for graduate school instead of trying to enter the job market at this point? It's funny you bring that up. I was actually on a call yesterday with some other companies and uh, career services folks, and they said that, you know, graduate school enrollment or, you know, admissions, they're, they're sort of putting out a lot of these enticing messaging to say, you know, this discount or, or th right, trying to, to buffer their enrollment. So I think, you know, if graduate school is on your radar, I'm sure that you're, you know, going to be um, solicited by a number of different opportunities um, in regards to these, you know, one year grad programs. So I've heard there's an aggressive recruitment push uh, there on that end. So it's interesting that you mentioned that. I mean, you know, for me to sit here and say yes or no, it really depends on a case by case, right? Um, uh, whether, you know, what your career aspirations are, if you're in a field that benefits more from a master's degree, um, whether or not you have an internship now, right? I mean, there are so many variables, uh, but I would say make sure that you know, you have a network of trusted advisors that can offer you impartial advice, right? I wouldn't go to the graduate school career services because then they're like, of course you should come here, right? I mean, you've got to have some sort of impartiality to it. But, um, you know, it's it's definitely that the opportunities will be there for those most likely those one year full time grad programs because they, they see it as an opportunity, right? Um, and I think if it makes sense for you, um time wise financially right there there are considerations there so it's really tough to give a give a blanket answer to that but you know collect all your facts collect all your data uh, find those trusted advisors that you can weight uh, the pros and cons of it but. yeah 
I agree. Um, and I hate to say this, but yeah, the answer is it depends. Um, I definitely, so I think if it was part of your plan at some point in the future, maybe it is the right time. Um, but if it was never part of your plan before and you don't know if you would get much value out of, you know, going into graduate school, um, you're just trying to, to use it as a way to fill your time during a difficult job situation, maybe not the best idea. Um, there are plenty of ways that you can stay productive during this time. Um, and if that wasn't part of your plan, if it's going to put you into debt, um, it's it's not necessarily something that you should do. Um, coming from an unbiased standpoint, um, you know, I, I also went to graduate school right after college. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's definitely value in it, but not maybe not for everyone depending on the route that you're looking to go into in your career um but if it's something that was built into your plan just a little bit down the road it it might be a good idea to do it a little bit sooner rather than later given the circumstances of what's going on in the world okay great thank you we have time for one maybe two more questions if somebody wants to type in a, a last shot but i'll ask a one that we had earlier, um, which is what, and again, I'm looking for a crystal ball here, um, fall forecasting. Are you um, at the moment, thank you, Bruce, but very Karnak, those of us are old. Um, um, have you um, made plans? What are your plans for the fall? Uh, is it um, moving as usual in terms of numbers and looking for fall hires um you know to do your hiring in the fall or is it up in the air are you putting it on hold um and frankly universities don't know what we're doing in the fall either but that said at the moment what are your plans for fall hiring at least i'll go uh i don't have set numbers but you know my boss who i just had a status with i mean the plans are Greg still continue to make plans for the fall. I mean, we're still gonna hire our interns and we're still gonna look for uh, full-timers based on how many interns accepted and, and that nature. So we're, we're still a go for the uh, for full uh, campus recruiting. And we have probably have the same numbers. I haven't got the exact numbers, but we're probably gonna hire the exact number of interns, uh, if not more, um, for next summer. I know for us at um, Verizon Media, our plans are to definitely continue to hire, but I mean, we're taking information in every day on a case by case basis because we don't know what that looks like um, given um, the current um, economic environment. So we could see an influx and we need to hire a little bit more or hire about the same amount of number or maybe scale back a little bit. I mean, it changes day to day. Same for us. I mean, I think if, if one thing this has all taught us is, the, you know, the fluidity of this situation, right? You know, there, there were a number of times when I logged off on Friday and boy, by the time I logged back on on Monday at work, it was a completely different, you know, direction or, or things like that. So right now, uh, end of April, we do plan on, you know, recruiting full steam ahead in the fall. How and where we will do that? will certainly depend on how the schools approach, you know, um, their guidelines and what the guidelines are at that point. Um, Lisa, to your point, the schools don't even know yet, and, and I'm sure there's a variety of contingencies that are out there. Um, so, so, you know, TBD on that front, but it's, it's certainly within our plans. And again, how and where we'll recruit, um, we'll see. Yeah, and I think, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to probably repeat a lot of what you're already hearing. Um, it depends. We don't know um, what the fall looks like. We're still trying to navigate through the summer. Um, right now, so our, our most recent full-time class just finished up their virtual training. Um, it went well, so it's definitely something that we can continue to do. I think we our company is a little bit different in the way that we can still do business 100% virtually if need be. Um, maybe not as effectively, and it's a little bit more difficult to navigate the beginning of a career and learn um, you know, as much as you possibly can in this setting. Um, so it, it might look a little bit different, but we are staying positive and um, we're Right now, falls a little too far out to know, but we're prepared to do it virtually if we have to, but staying positive that we won't have to. 
That's great. Thank you for your all of your crystal balls. Um, I, we did have one question, um, which I think we we sort of answered it, but maybe maybe not as clearly as um, would have liked, um, which is somebody who got laid off. So it's an alum who maybe got laid off, and because of COVID-19, um, how do they how should they address that in their application? Um, is there going to be a drop down that says reason for leaving COVID-19? Um, what are your thoughts um, on on how they should present that since they're going to have that gap that you talked about, Leah, in their in their resume? When as recruiters, we see it all the time. We see, um, you know, a start date and end date. And um, as long as you have something to speak to why there's a gap, um, it's different. And also, this is we're making history right now. What what we're living through. Um, if an employer ever asks you know, why you ended your job right now. I, I don't even know if we're gonna have to ask. We'll, we'll just assume and know, um, but we will have a conversation around it. Um, and it's it's something that we are not going to hold against you. Uh, you had nothing to, you know, nothing to do with what's going on in the world, obviously. And so um, as long as you have a conversation, an open conversation and uh, you don't try to hide it, um, I don't think, that's something to be afraid of. Yeah, it's it's precise, same, same, right? To to piggyback off of what Leah had said, um, <clears throat> cover letters are not required. I, I think some people prefer them, some people don't, some people do them, some people don't. Um, I'm not here to tell you that you have to do one, but if if you're worried about a message not being relayed because of just what the resume says and and that's a that's a concern for you then address it in the cover letter and mm -hmm. and, and pair them together um to eliminate the jump to conclusion from just the typical resume format so if it's that much of a concern you have the cover letter option to court sort of help explain during that you know document review process also to add what um, Bruce and Leah mentioned too, is we're going through history right now. We're going through a global pandemic. So if, unless you're living under a rock, I mean, you're aware, you're very aware of what's going on in the world. Back in 2008, during a financial crash, I was laid off. So were a lot of people. Um, and before getting my next computer, I mean, they didn't back their eyes. I was able to speak to it. And they knew what was going on. So I, I'm pretty sure we're going to be in the same boat. That's great. That's all very reassuring, and and I appreciate those those answers. Um, so, any final thoughts? Um, I I think the takeaways here is is unprecedented. Um, we're all human. We all understand. We have a degree of empathy. Um, be resilient, right? Um, be um, pursue what you want to pursue. Take advantage of the time that maybe you have um, to volunteer and um, gain some skills that maybe you wouldn't have had time to think about or do. Um, what else is? Is there anything else you'd like to to offer as, as parting thoughts to our to our audience? My final thought would be um, as you start to go about uh, reaching out, um, networking, and building your own personal network is make sure that when you're reaching out that you have good intention and that you have a meaningful message. Saying that you graduated from the University of Connecticut and you're just looking for a job is not very meaningful or impactful, but saying you have a certain area of expertise is what you study. You notice the organization is doing X, Y, Z. This is your interest and your passion goes a long way. So just personalize those messages as you continue to reach out instead of a blanket message because it shows that you didn't do your due diligence um, which can go a long way. I'm gonna add to that too. Um, I think, you know, when all of the world returns to normal, um, everyone is gonna be looking for jobs <clears throat> at the same time. Um, so you have to find a way to differentiate yourself even more so than you did while you were in college on the job search um, because you have so much more competition. Um, so use this time productively, I know we've already said this, but use this time productively, um, you know, do something, start a business that you always wanted to start, um, if that's even feasible. 
um, you know, taking online class that you thought was interesting and being more perspective on, you know, a, a new um, topic. Um, do something that is going to allow you to stand out when all of this is said and done with and you're, you're back in the job search. Uh, you know, all, all great advice and I'll just, you know, stay positive, right? stay stay healthy be smart right in terms of how we kind of go about this this re-entry um so that we can avoid any you know phase two of this right um you know be patient i know, I know that's tough to say but um you know we will get through this and um you know we'll we'll be you know better off and, and better prepared um but yeah to, to everything what they just said you know i, I think that that positivity you know, especially during these, these job search time, like, like, don't let it get you down. Use your network, not just for the job piece, but for the mental health well-being, right? You know, lean, lean on those um, that you have. And, and there's a number of services that UConn offers that relates to, to things like that. Because this is a case where a lot of people could kind of get dragged down and, and, and be, you know, downtrodden about it. But, but use all the services that are available to you, not just in the career space, but, you know, for our own mental health and well-being. It's really important in a time like this. Great. Well, thank you so much to uh, your pan and my all our panelists, and thanks everyone else um, for attending today's webinar, the second of our advice and perspective series. You've really shared some insight on today's job market and job search in, in this really unprecedented environment. We really appreciate the time you took to share your experience with us. As mentioned, this webinar is part of an ongoing webinar series on careers and issues in this pandemic environment produced by the Yukon Center for Career Development. This is the second webinar in the series. Next week, we'll, hold a, we'll host a career coach and recruiter from another of Yukon's key corporate partners. He'll be sharing tips on the job search in the virtual environment, including pointers on virtual interviews, resumes, and the search itself. Please check the Center for Career Development's event calendar at career.yukon.edu for more information about upcoming webinars and more resources for your job search. Once you leave today's webinar, you'll receive a survey on the presentation, and we'd appreciate it if you would complete that and provide your feedback. You'll also re receive a follow-up email within 48 hours with a link to view a recording of today's webinar. In addition, a recording of today's session will be available on the Yukon Center for Career Development's website. We're excited about sharing more career advice and perspectives from alums and other Yukon friends. On behalf of the Yukon Center for Career Development and our guests, thank you for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for having us. Thanks. <laughs>